I'm Salvatore Babonis, and today's lecture is Global Refugee Numbers. There are now more than 21 million refugees in the world, a number that seems to be growing every day. Long-term Palestinian refugees from the Arab-Israeli conflicts account for around 5 million of those. But most of the other 16 million refugees in the world were driven abroad by ongoing conflicts that are still occurring. Most new refugee flows are generated by civil wars, which also generate large numbers of internally displaced persons. Unfortunately, civil wars seem to be becoming more common, not less, as international wars diminish in the 21st century. With recent outflows from Syria included, there are now more than 21 million refugees in the world, about 16 million of them of recent vintage. Uh, this uh, graphic from the Amnesty International website is a little bit out of date in terms of total numbers, but the rankings are the same. The top 10 source countries of new refugees are Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia, and on down the list. The first six of these are all countries engaged in active civil wars, or in the case of Sudan and South Sudan, a civil war that recently led to the birth of South Sudan, while a continuing civil war in Sudan uh, boils under the surface between the government in Khartoum and its western province of Darfur. You have to go down to number seven on the list, Myanmar, to find people who are being turned into refugees through more conventional uh, mechanisms that were envisaged in the 1951 Refugee Charter. And even in Myanmar, there are low-level civil wars, uh, again, bubbling beneath the surface of uh, a country that seems otherwise stable. Central African Republic is involved in a civil war, or recently was. Uh, Iraq, of course, since the 2003 U.S. invasion has been in turmoil. Uh, for the last uh, 14 years. And uh, Eritrea, uh, again, is not a country currently in civil war. It's a country that was created by a civil war between Ethiopia and Eritrea. In fact, Eritrea, uh, in fact, Ethiopia fell off the list of top refugee countries once that civil war was settled and Eritrea became a separate country. Of these top 10 sources, the only one for which most of the refugee flows coming out today are for classic refugee reasons. Discrimination against uh, particular people for their politics and for their minority status. Um, only Eritrea is the, is the only one of these ten that fits that kind of classic model of refugee flows. The other nine all have refugee flows resulting from active conflict. Countries with large numbers of internally displaced persons are pretty much the same countries that have large numbers of refugees. Uh, they're, for the most part, countries that are uh, experiencing either civil war or some kind of ongoing civil strife, uh, like in Colombia, where hopefully in Colombia the recent uh, peace settlement between the rebels fighting the government uh, and the government in Bogota, uh, hopefully that will lead to the uh, return of people who uh, had been internally displaced by the drug wars and the uh, civil war in Colombia. The top hosting countries for refugees are those that are close to the conflicts. Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan for the Syrian civil war, and Pakistan and Iran for the Afghan civil war. Now you'll see there are many other hosting countries that host large numbers of refugees uh, that are not engaged in civil war. The United States uh, and Canada are major recipients of refugee flows, as are the countries of Western Europe, uh, Germany, France, Italy, uh, and Sweden all take large numbers of refugees. Also, you might be interested to see on this uh, refugee map Russia and China. Uh, Russia's refugees largely come from the conflicts in which Russia has been engaged all along its southern border. Conflicts with uh, you know, Georgia, with uh, Ukraine, uh, the turmoil in Central Asia resulting from the breakup of the Soviet Union have all led to refugees coming to Russia. In China, uh, most of the refugees are refugees from 
conflicts on its border, particularly refugees from uh, Myanmar and Laos, uh, from Southeast Asia in general. The association of refugees with civil war has become so close that we almost consider them the same thing. Uh, we kind of think of people, refugees, as people fleeing civil war. Uh, but it's easy to forget that the global refugee system wasn't really designed for civil war. The global refugee system was designed to prevent a catastrophe along the lines uh, of the Holocaust, a situation in which a group within a country uh, was so uh, so discriminated against by that country that it resulted in the threat of genocide and ultimately in the case of the Holocaust did result in genocide. So if you look at the 1951 Refugee Convention, a refugee is someone who is uh, has a fear of being persecuted for race, religion, nationality, membership in a social group, or political opinion. Refugees are not simply people caught in the crossfire uh, when there is a conflict in their country. That said, fleeing a conflict is a very natural and understandable thing to do in time of war, and any humane country, in any humane society, must shelter people whose lives are at risk from war in their own countries. Uh, but this has led to massive political politicization of refugee problems because most of today's refugees don't fit neatly under the technical definitions of refugees that resulted at the end of World War II. Historically, most refugees returned to their home countries at the end of the conflict, or at least most refugees in the late 20th and early 21st century, between 1990 and 2010. Uh, that was certainly the case. As you can see from this chart of refugee returns, in the 1990s and early 2000s, sometimes two or three million people a year uh, returned to their countries at the ends of civil wars. Uh, as I mentioned, the civil war between Ethiopia and Eritrea uh, caused millions of refugees to leave Ethiopia in the 1980s and 1990s, but once Eritrea became independent and the war was over, Ethiopians returned to Ethiopia, which is now one of the fastest growing countries in the world. Since 2010, or really since the late 2000s in general, this trend seems to have been uh, moving the other direction. Today, most people do not return to their countries of origin. Uh, refugees increasingly seek to stay in the countries where they seek refuge. And that, again, has made the politics of humanely accepting refugees even harder. It's one thing to ask people to accept temporary refugees for a short time until it's safe for them to go home. It's a different political question to ask people to welcome permanent immigrants into their society. And this has set up the big conflict between people who see refugees in humane terms as people to be helped and people who see refugees as a threat, people to be kept out. Key takeaways. First, we have to remember that the long-term Palestinian refugees from the Arab-Israeli wars are not really part of contemporary refugee debates. In fact, they even have their own special United Nations agency, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine, uh, that administers Palestinian refugee camps and handles Palestinian refugee issues. Uh, Palestinians do not fall under the UNHCR. Second, most refugees today are seeking refuge from civil wars. They're just trying to get out of the crossfire. And this generates uh, first, many internally displaced people. They don't necessarily flee to other countries. They may flee within their own countries. But second, it creates a lot of confusion about the application of the 1951 Refugee Convention. Finally, that 1951 Refugee Convention itself simply was not designed with civil wars in mind. And as a result, we've seen an extreme politicization of refugee issues. Uh, refugee issues are not handled simply on a case-by-case -case basis by national courts, as they should be. Instead, they have become uh, major issues in elections, as we certainly have seen in the last several elections in Australia, but as also seen in the United States 
and in Europe, where refugee flows have become an important political issue. Thank you for listening. You can find out more about me at salvatorbagonis.com, where you can also sign up for my monthly Global Asian newsletter.